Hey everybody, I don't know if any of you have heard of a recent scam involving an Ethereum whale losing approximately $70 million in crypto. And the weird thing about it was he willingly sent the crypto to the scammer. Word of the scam spread through the crypto news like wildfire. Well, basically at this point, the cryptoverse has moved on because the news cycle in the cryptoverse is about this long. But I wanted to do some research about this crazy event to see how this scam happened and how I could help you avoid the same fate as this poor person. So I did a little, actually a lot, of digging, and it turns out there was no hack, there was no security breach, no lost keys, or any complex social engineering scheme that resulted in the loss of this staggering amount of funds. Again, the victim sent $70 million worth of wrapped Bitcoin, which is an Ethereum token, to the scammer. Yup, here you go, scammer. Enjoy your Lambo, the beach house in Cabo, and your private jet. On me. In today's video, I'm going to conduct a crypto debriefing on this incredibly unfortunate event. I'm going to explain what happened, how it happened, and exactly how you can prevent this from happening to you. So let's get to it. So who were the players in this scam? Let's look at them. We have the victim, or the whale, and we have the scammer. So let's first take a look at the whale wallet. Here's the whale wallet on the Ethereum blockchain scanner called Etherscan. And as you can see right now, there's a balance of 22,960 Ethereum and the overall value of the portfolio is $1.167 billion. Now, obviously, 22,000 Ethereum does not add up to $1.167 billion. So there's some other tokens in this account. The main token that is being held in this account is 195 trillion Bitcoin BR tokens. Now, I did a ton of research on this Bitcoin BR project, and just on the Binance blockchain account alone, it says there are 21 quintillion tokens of this Bitcoin BR available. 21 quintillion. And of course, the value of each token is 0.0000. .0000 whatever dollars and not a project that I would be interested in investing in myself but hey if you want to invest in it go for it now I did look up at some exchanges where this token is being sold and it trades very thinly like the in the amount of like ten dollars in a day so to accumulate one billion dollars worth of this token and can't be done on an exchange. So I'm guessing that this person who owns this wallet is uh, involved in this Bitcoin BR uh, development. Either he's a, an investor or he's a developer or some way involved in this token. The address for the whale wallet is right here. And this is the wallet we're going to be referring to throughout the video. The other wallet involved in the scam is that of the scammer, which holds a grand total of $13 worth of Ethereum. So obviously the wrapped Bitcoin that they stole, they moved on. And I'm going to talk about the details of that later in the video. The scam wallet also has a list of about 68 transactions, but only one single transaction to the wallet of the whale or the victim in this case. So what exactly happened? On May 3rd, 2024, which was just a few weeks ago, one of the biggest address poisoning scams ever recorded emptied the wallet of this Ethereum whale to the tune of approximately $70 million, like I said. The whale sent the funds directly to the scammer's wallet. There was no hack, there was no nothing. In order to understand how this happened, we have to first look at the history of the whale wallet itself. This whale has been accumulating and trading wrapped Bitcoin in various wallets since early 2022. Then on December 7th, 2023, just after 9 a.m., the whale transferred 1,152 wrapped Bitcoin, valued at the time at over $50 million, to the wallet we're going to focus on today. The wrapped Bitcoin sat there dormant until March 15th of 2024, when it appears that the wrapped Bitcoin was then sold into DAI, a stablecoin, on the one-inch decentralized exchange for a tidy 48% profit since it was transferred, not since it was purchased, but since the transfer to this wallet, the price of the wrapped Bitcoin had risen by 48%. Pretty good trade. Then the wallet went quiet again until April 18th, 2024, when the DAI was used again to purchase wrapped Bitcoin on the one-inch exchange again. Then for some reason, on May 1st, 2024, the whale sold all the wrapped Bitcoin again and then bought it back on May 2nd. Crazy trading, and I'm not sure that that was a profitable move. But obviously this person is not afraid to throw the money around 
and is a very experienced trader. Okay, let's get to the scam day. On May 3rd, 2024, at 9.14 a.m., the whale sent a test transaction of 0.05 Ethereum to this address, which was a brand new wallet at the time. Three minutes later, at 9.17 a.m., the scammer sent a worthless amount of Ethereum or Ethereum token to the whale's wallet using a 42 cent transaction fee from the address here. Now, if you'll notice, the beginning and the ends of both the original address that the 0.5 Ethereum was sent to by the whale as a test transaction and the address that the scammer used in sending that little token to the whale's wallet are exactly the same. That's address poisoning. It's when you receive a little chunk of worthless nothing into your account and the address mimics an address in your account, hoping that you'll send funds to it by mistake. Well, then on May 3rd at 10.31, an hour and 17 minutes after the original test transaction, the whale sent 1,155 RAF Bitcoin valued at $72.4 million to the address that deposited the worthless token, not the address the test transaction went to. Whoops. So that was a transaction where the wrapped Bitcoin went directly to the scammer's wallet. The whale also sent four more 0.01 Ethereum transactions to the scammer's wallet over the next few days. I don't understand why, as if 72 million wasn't enough. They probably did this to see if they had the correct address or verify something, but they did. Then on May 8th, the whale sent the exact same number of wrapped Bitcoin, that is 1,155 wrapped Bitcoin, to another address, oddly, that is very similar to the Ethereum tested address, the original one, but not the same, and very similar to the scammer's address. I don't understand how or why the whale sent the 1,155 wrapped Bitcoin to that address and how they got an address that was so similar to the previous two addresses. But it's it's kind of makes me scratch my head a little bit. Presumably, they did this transaction to correct their mistake and fulfill the desired transaction that they were hoping to do in the first place. The wrapped Bitcoin from that second transaction is still sitting in that wallet, has not been transferred out as far as I can tell. Although on the Ethereum scanner, it does say that the value of that wallet is zero, but there's no transactions that would indicate that the wrapped Bitcoin is gone. I don't know if that may have been a exchange address or something. I'm not sure. Back to May 3rd, and the scammer. When the scammer received the wrapped Bitcoin, they immediately exchanged it to into Ethereum and started sending it to different wallets, and then presumably to exchanges for sale. So what went wrong? I can only guess, of course, and none of us really know. Well, some people know, but I don't know exactly, so I will venture a guess at, as to what happened. The UI, the user interface of some wallet software, has the transaction history list prominently displayed beneath or on the main screen, beneath the area that you would sort of create a transaction. They do that for easy reference so you can see the activity in the wallet. My guess is that the whale simply copied the address of the scammer wallet from his or her wallet transaction history. Since they successfully sent a test transaction of 0.05 Ethereum, they may have simply just copied the most recent address in their wallet transaction history, assuming it was the address from the test transaction and used it in the 72 million wrapped Bitcoin transaction. What I don't really understand is that the address would have been clearly listed as a deposit in their account or in their wallet, not a send. And why wouldn't the whale have looked for the 0.5 ETH transaction right below it and simply used that address? Because that was the last outgoing transaction. We're talking about $72 million. My guess is that the hour and 17 minute delay between the test transaction and the actual wrapped Bitcoin transaction was enough to make the whale forget about the details and assume that that was the last transaction in the wallet. Maybe they were trying to save time. Maybe they were distracted. Maybe they were in a hurry. Who knows? Okay, today, the day of the recording, I stumbled across an article that said the money or the funds had been returned to the whale. What the heck? <laughs> this story just goes on and on and on. And I bet everybody missed that information because I really didn't see it on many news outlets. It was just one article on one site. Yes, 
Apparently, all the Ethereum that the scammer transferred the wrapped Bitcoin into has been returned to the whale. Let's figure out what the heck went on here. So two hours after the original scam, Scam Sniffer, this all-in-one web security solution, posted this on Twitter. It says, two hours ago, another victim lost $68 million by copying the wrong address from a contaminated transfer history. So the scam sniffer picked up this problem or the scam right away. And then a company called Slowmist got word of this scam and did a deep analysis on this event. Slowmist is a blockchain security firm established in 2018, providing services such as security audits, security consultants, red teaming, and more. They may have been hired by the victim to help in this instance. I don't really know, but they got involved. On May 8th, Following a very extensive analysis of the scam, Slow Mist published their findings on Medium in a really extensive article. Here is the Medium article published by Slow Mist on May 8th. That was five days ago. Small bait, big fish unveiling the 1155 rep Bitcoin phishing incident. And this was before the money was returned. So this, there are some really interesting developments. This is a very long article and I will go through some of the highlights for you. So... Slow Mist was able to track the wrapped Bitcoin from the whale wallet to the scammer's wallet, of course, and see that the scammer had exchanged it into 22,955 Ethereum. And then the scammer spread those Ethereum out to 10 different wallets. All this was done on the day of the attack itself. Then on May 7th, four days later, the attacker moved the Ethereum to multiple wallets. And I think the final tally was around 440 different wallets to try to obfuscate the presence of the Ethereum. But everything is public on chain. Duh, we can follow it all. And I could spend hours digging through this, but Slow Mist apparently has some really advanced software and techniques that they can track these things down within a reasonable period of time. Unfortunately, I think the IRS has the same stuff. So when the attacker moved the Ethereum into these 400 different wallets, of course, when you move Ethereum, there are transaction fees. So Slow Mist checked where these transaction fees were coming from. The source wallet had paid for 20,000 transactions to different addresses to poison them to try to get funds sent to the wrong address. And they found a lot of scam victims. Some of them had lost money to the tune of $750,000. Not as big as the one we're talking about, but really significant amounts of money that the scammer had stolen. All of those 20,000 transactions took place between April 19th and May 3rd, if you can believe it. Sort of a shotgun approach, I guess. Then in a separate thread, on May 4th, the day after the scam, the whale or the victim contacted the scammer through the block scan on chain messaging app telling him and i'm quoting you've won brother you can keep 10 percent and return the 90 percent we can act like nothing happened we both know 7 million is enough to live very comfortably but 70 million will keep you up at night he's playing on his ethics right there i don't know that the scammer has such strong ethics that he's not sleeping but you never know so after several more communications from the whale to the scammer the scammer actually replied on may 9th and he said and i quote please leave your telegram and i will contact you at least he has manners right good for him his mother must be so proud their conversation must have moved to telegram because it stopped on the messaging service and on May 10th, all 22,955 Ethereum were returned to the whale. Are you kidding me? $70 million was returned. Unbelievable. This is an incredible story. I've actually never heard anything like this, and I've never had the opportunity, or I've never taken the opportunity to look at the on-chain details, but this is unbelievable. So here are my questions about this whole event. I know the whale has more than a billion dollars of crypto and is used to trading with big money, but we're still talking about 70 plus million dollars here. I just can't imagine a situation where someone would be rich enough not to treat that amount of money with a certain level of respect. That's serious life-changing money. That said, I have a few questions. Why on earth would you choose a receiving address from your transaction history to send $72 million 
of wrapped Bitcoin if it was supposed to go to a new wallet, which is what the Ethereum test transaction went to. Question number two. I mentioned earlier that the whale sent a second wrapped Bitcoin transaction in the exact same amount of wrapped Bitcoin to another address after the first one sort of failed. Well, why didn't the whale send that wrapped Bitcoin, the second one, to the address of the Ethereum test transaction. So I don't understand why the whale made a whole new address. Question number three, why on earth was the second wrapped Bitcoin transaction sent to a wallet with a very similar address to the scammer address and the Ethereum test transaction address? It just doesn't make sense to me when addresses are so random and so complex. I don't understand how the whale sent that second transaction to an address that was so similar to the other two. Question number four, why was the second transaction of wrapped Bitcoin the exact same amount of wrapped Bitcoin? And if it was super important to sort of fulfill this obligation, why hasn't it moved? Although, like I said earlier, the wallet says it has a value of zero, but there's no transfers out and there's no transactions in the wallet. Question number five, why has the wrapped Bitcoin not moved at all. I don't understand. If it was so important to move it in the first place, why hasn't it moved from where it was sent in the second place? And question number six, why did the whale send four more 0.01 Ethereum transactions to the scammer's wallet after sending the wrapped Bitcoin? I just don't understand. So those are some of the questions that I couldn't figure out by going deep into the Ethereum scanner. So what can we learn from this disaster and eventual recovery. I don't know about you, but every time I send crypto anywhere, I get really nervous. And that's a good thing, and you should too. I've been in crypto for seven years, and I have never made a mistake like this yet. And now I'm going to make especially sure that I don't. Here are five things that you can do to make sure this never happens to you. One, double and triple check the address you're sending crypto to. Verify at least the first six and final eight characters in the address. I guess scammers, when they mimic addresses, they only do the first five or four or so. So first six, last eight, first eight, last eight, whatever. You can do the whole address, but verify the address. Not just a quick glance at the first or last few characters. Oh, also make sure you're sending to the right chain because that can happen as well. If you send Ethereum to Polygon, it's not good. Number two, don't make a habit of selecting addresses from your transaction history. It's way too easy to mess up just like this guy did. Number three, consider setting up a whitelist address book of verified addresses in your software program so you can reference them for future transactions really quick. Number four, for large amounts of crypto, send a test transaction first. Wait for confirmation on the other end and then send the final amount. You can send the second amount to the same address as the first, even if the wallet generated a new address for the second transaction. And number five, don't send crypto in the evening. Don't send it while you're distracted and don't send it in a hurry. Lock the kids in a closet, close the door, and concentrate on the task at hand. Well, that's it for today. Let me know in the comments what you think about this crazy address poisoning crypto scam and what you think happened in this tragic scenario. And while you're down there, subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.